authorities that tax success of a tax audit should not be measured how much tax has, uh, was recovered uh, as a result. No. There may be a situation where the tax auditor finds the tax return correctly declared income, but it does not mean that the tax auditor failed or he did not perform. So we wanted to be on same page. So that was repeatedly uh, explained and advised. Now, how the tax audit under the tax audit framework will uh, uh, work? There are, I would say, 10 steps. So I'll explain step by step. The step one is the selection of taxpayers by the, to be audited by the Federal Board of Revenue or by the Commissioner of Inland Revenue. Now, the law authorizes the Commissioner to select a case for audit and it is the exclusive right of the Commissioner or FBR. And the tax audit framework clearly states that in this selection process, ICAP or its members will have no role whatsoever. So the current selection for, of, for tax audit of the 2008 returns, I think 468 tax returns have been selected for audit for 2008, uh, 460, yeah. Those have been selected by FBR itself through random balloting. ICAP had no role in this. And the step two is selection of tax auditors by FBR or by the Commissioner in Rand Revenue. Again, this is also the exclusive domain of FBR or its commissioners to select, appoint, auditor for any audity. So what, what was the role here, the ICAP? ICAP provided the list of the members to FBR and also provided the list of different categories. For example, there is a panel of auditors uh, from SBP, there is a panel of auditors from the SECP, and there are QCR rated firms. So we did provide this data to uh, FBR that these are the, you know, uh, our total membership out of this. I mean, these are the firms or the auditors on the SBP panel or SECP panel, and these are the firms who have are QCR rated by ICAP. So during our discussions, FBR thought that the number of audits are since uh, not uh, significant. So let's start with the auditors who are QCR rated. So Hafizab is the member audit, so I mean they decided to allocate or appoint the, those firms who are QCR rated for 2008 tax audit. Then the third step is consent and confirmation of independence by the tax auditor. The moment the commissioner will write to a tax auditor that you have been appointed or you have been nominated to be appointed as the auditor of a particular company, the tax auditor will file his consent to act as the auditor and also confirm that he has no conflict of interest, he is independent. There are two uh, conditions specified in the tax audit framework that a person who is the statutory auditor of a company or a firm who is the tax advisor of a company cannot be appointed as the auditor of, a com of that company. For 2008 selection, FBR has taken one more precautions. They have applied this basis to three years that a firm should not be tax advisor or auditor for 2007, 8, and 9. Because there may be a situation that a person was not, or what Chartered Accountant was not auditor in 2008, but he was appointed subsequently. So that may create some sort of, you know, or impair the independence. So this has been uh, taken care of. So that the audit should not be for three years. Then, the, or the uh, commissioner 
will issue a letter of engagement to the auditor. Here, I just wanted to uh, highlight or uh, emphasize that uh, we have heard from uh, different parts that there is a, uh, not very clarity on this uh, issue that who will issue the engagement, whether the tax auditor or the commissioner. The tax audit framework provides that the commissioner will issue the tax uh, engagement letter that will be accepted and signed by the tax auditor and also by the taxpayer. So it's a tripartite uh, ag contract or agreement. But it's not that simple. There are issues and I'll talk on uh, when I come to this uh, particular uh, aspect in, uh, at a later stage. Then the auditor and the commissioner will do the risk evaluation and hold a pre-audit meeting. And in that meeting, preferably the taxpayer should also be invited. After there, maybe, I mean, uh, it can be in two phases. First, the tech commissioner and the tax uh, auditor meets, or commissioner or his representative. And in the second phase, they invite the taxpayer to just, I mean, uh, uh, before start of the tax audit. Then the auditor will finalize the audit plan and agree with the commissioner. Then auditor will execute the audit plan. And there is a processes given in the tax audit framework. I'll uh, explain uh, in, in a later stage. Then there'll be a submission of, after the execution of the audit plan, the next step would be that the auditor will submit a draft report to the commissioner. And then there will be a discussion that will take place between the uh, tax auditor, commissioner or his representative and the tax payer. Tax payer will also be invited to this meeting or his representative. The last stage would be the auditor will submit a final report to the commissioner. So these are the, in brief, I mean, if you look at the tax audit framework, three, uh, 10 steps, I mean, now we can summarize. Now, selection of auditor, as I said before, it will be the sole discretion of FBR. No role from ICAP. I just wanted to make it very clear to the members. Statutory auditor or the tax advisor of a taxpayer shall not be appointed as the auditor. Firms whose partner is working in two firms will not be considered for appointment as a tax auditor if the other firm is the statutory auditor or the tax advisor. So there should be a complete independence. Tax audit framework doesn't talk about any other exclusions or exceptions. For example, if a firm is an internal auditor, can that be appointed? Principally should not be. But it's not specifically provided in tax audit framework. So I have just brought this, you know, for the consideration of the audience. Then, what is the suggested criteria for selection of auditor as have been provided in the tax audit framework. As I said before, there are different, you know, the auditors can be uh, what you call uh, categorized. I, I, I just wanted to avoid this word, the categorization, but there are, you know, the panels from, for the financial sector by the uh, issues State Bank of Pakistan and SECP. So this was category A, B, C firms for financial sectors from SBP panel. That is one suggestion. And for non-financial sector, listed companies, IC, ICAP, QCR rated partnership firms, and economically significant entities, also ICAP, QCR rated firms, and medium sized entities, ICAP, QCR rated partnerships, and sole proprietors. <coughs> 